Special Costs Click Special Costs in the side menu. It consists of the following main sections. Special Need Support and Exceptional Costs Erasmus Plus puts emphasis on involving young people with fewer opportunities and special support is given to people with disabilities if their participation requires special equipment or accompanying persons. In order to record costs for our special needs support, click the Add button under the Special Needs Support table. Four fields are available to provide the required information. Organization Click the drop-down list and select from the organizations added in the Participating Organizations section. Identify the number of participants. Provide a description which should be a justification of special costs for your project activities. Identify the specific grant amount. There are no lump sums, therefore, you can enter 100% of the specific costs directly related to participants with special needs and accompanying persons, taking part in transnational learning, teaching and training activities. This may include costs related to travel and subsistence, if justified, and as long as a grant for these participants is not requested through budget categories travel and individual support. If needed, you can add more than one special needs support item. Click the Add button and proceed the same way as the first special needs support entered. To insert exceptional costs details, click the Add button in the Exceptional Costs section under the Special Needs Support Items. Provide the required information in the same way as the special costs. Exceptional costs are 75% contribution to your real costs related to subcontracting or purchase of goods and services for your project. Please note that subcontracting must be related to services that cannot be provided directly by the participating organizations for duly justified reasons. Equipment cannot concern normal office equipment or equipment normally used by the participating organizations. In the next step of your application, you have to provide information on the follow-up of your project. Click the follow-up option in the side menu. The respective screen opens. In this section, you must provide information on the impact of your project, the dissemination and use of project results, and sustainability. When describing the expected impact, be as specific as possible, because strategic partnership projects are funded to create substantial long-term impact in the field of youth. Here, identify the expected impact on participants, participating organizations, target groups, and other stakeholders that you plan to involve in your project. Make sure you mention the impact on each of these groups, then identify the expected impact at local, regional, national and international levels. You may relate here with the section where you describe the added value of your project as well as objectives and impact. After defining the impact at different levels and on different groups, identify specific indicators of success and ways you will measure the impact achieved throughout the project. Now, describe your strategy for the dissemination and use of project results. At first, define the target groups of your dissemination activities inside and outside your partnership. Define your target audiences at different levels and describe why you choose these specific audiences. Next, describe activities that you will carry out to disseminate the results of your project beyond your partnership. In the next section, identify who will be responsible for doing that within your partnership and what specific expertise they have in this area. Also, define what resources you will make available to allow proper implementation of your dissemination plan. If you plan on producing intellectual outputs, please describe how you intend to ensure free access for public to a digital form of this material, as Erasmus Plus has an open access requirement for all materials developed through its projects. However, if you intend to put any limitation on the use of the open license, please specify the reasons, extent and nature of this limitation. In this section, identify how the project results will remain available and will be used by others. In the next part, you may add any other relevant information to give a full understanding of your dissemination plan and its expected impact. The last section here is related to your project sustainability. Define the activities and results that will be maintained after the end of the EU funding and how you will ensure resources needed to sustain them. Once complete, the follow-up tab in the left-hand side of your screen will be marked with a green check. Budget Summary Click Budget Summary in the side menu. The Budget Summary screen opens. This part of your application is read-only, 
and will provide you an easy-to-read overview of the budget details of your planned project. Project management and implementation. Transnational project meetings. Intellectual outputs. Multiplier events. Learning, teaching and training activities. Special needs support. And exceptional costs. If your project is about sharing good practices and you do not plan any intellectual outputs, you will find no amount displayed in the column Grant. The last budget table available lists the budget per organization. Here, you can check more details by clicking the Menu button and choosing Show Budget Details. Another table opens where you will find all budget items listed specific to the organization. If you want to make any changes in the budget, you should go to the section of Specific Activity by using the side menu on the left and making specific adjustments. Project Summary In the next step of your application, you have to provide information on the Project Summary. Click the Project Summary option in the side menu. The Project Summary screen opens. Please provide a short summary of your project. Remember that this section may be used by supporting institutions and their publications. It will also feed the Erasmus Plus Project Results platform. Be concise and clear. At least the following elements should be mentioned. The context and objectives of your project. The number and profile of participants to be involved. The description of activities. Methodology. A short description of the results and impact envisaged. And finally, the potential longer-term benefits. The summary will be publicly available in case the grant is awarded to your project. Other parts of this section Summary of participating organizations Summary of activities and participants Budget summary and project total grant are read-only and pre-filled. All data is taken from the information provided in the various application sections. Annexes Before you can submit your application, you must provide annexes within the application. The page here explains the type of annexes and how to do this in the web application forms. One of the files you are required to annex to your application form is a duly signed Declaration of Honor. Download it via the Download Declaration of Honor button. Then select Open or Save File in the pop-up. Print the declaration and have it signed by the person who is legally authorized to represent your organization. Then scan it and upload it via the Add Declaration of Honor button. Check if your national agency accepts digital signature. If yes, you can use the digital signature instead of printing and signing. Then you are asked to attach a timetable for your project activities and outputs using the Gantt chart template provided. You can format the file by adding colors and some formatting to make your activity plan easy to understand for others. Next, attach any other relevant documents related to your project proposal. It may be some draft designs, proposals from subcontractors, training programs, price offers for special needs costs, etc. Please note that in case you are applying for a grant exceeding €60,000 and your organization is not a public body or an international organization, you must upload the required documents to give proof of your financial capacity in the participants portal where you registered your organization. These documents must be available to your national agency before signing the grant agreement at the latest, in case your project is selected. There are some constraints for adding annexes. You can attach a maximum of 10 files. The maximum size of all files combined is 10 megabytes. If you need to combine some of the annexes or make the size smaller, make use of plenty of online tools offering such functions. Checklist The last part of the web application is a checklist. It will help you double-check if your application is ready for submission. You will find a number of things to check under the checklist part of the screen, as well as a data protection notice and the corresponding checkboxes. Review all the items according to the checklist and check the corresponding boxes if they are OK. All boxes must be checked. Once all the items have been reviewed and the boxes checked, the checklist item on the left side menu is marked green. If all sections of your application form are valid, marked with a green check, and you have attached all the required documents, you can submit your form to your national agency. To submit the application, click the Submit button in the bottom left-hand corner. This button will only be active if all sections of the application have been filled, required documents attached, and the checklist confirmed. A pop-up will show up, asking you to confirm the submission. 
Click Yes if you are sure. Selecting No will cancel the submission, but not the application as such. In the final submission confirmation window, you will see a short summary. Click OK to close. The application form will close. Then the web application form's main screen opens. In the My Applications tab, you will now find your submitted application marked as submitted and with the completion status completed. If you submitted the application form before the deadline, you can still adjust and resubmit it. The application form opens, including all the details already submitted. Make any adjustments or changes necessary. Once the changes have been made, click the Submit button. As with the initial application, the Submit button will only be active if all sections in the form have been completed and marked with a green check. Applications for Erasmus Plus have a set deadline visible on the home screen. If you miss the official application deadline, you will not be able to apply. Under certain circumstances, however, it is possible to submit the application a bit later. An exception is made if you can prove that you tried to apply before the official application deadline and were not able to do so for technical reasons. In such a case, your national agency may still consider your application if the following three conditions are met. The date and time of your last submission attempt as mentioned in the Electronic Application Form Submission Summary section are before the applicable official application deadline. You informed your national agency within two hours after the application deadline, Brussels time. After this time, your application can no longer be considered. You send your complete application form, unmodified after your submission attempt, in PDF by email to your national agency within two hours after the application deadline, Brussels time. Your national agency will be able to open the application for you, so you can submit it.